Does AMD finally have a GPU to get excited about? It's been a long time since we've seen true price performance for anything graphics card wise. Let's take a look at the all new AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT and see what the deal is. The AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT is built on the AMD RDNA 3 architecture and is aiming itself to be the new go-to GPU for 1440p gaming. The 7800 XT features 16 gigs of GDDR6 memory. In terms of power delivery, it requires two PCIe power cables and no exotic power connectors. The Radeon RX 7800 XT will consume around 263 watts at full tilt, but I'll talk more about power consumption later because I found something very interesting with that. As far as setting the cards, we retested a bunch of graphics cards that we've tested on our regular i9-12900K test bench. We use both Windows and Linux in this video for testing. And this gives you a better understanding of whereabouts the performance sits with the 7800 XT. That said, AMD did provide us with Linux drivers, but as usual, not everything ran as intended. The results will also vary from outlet to outlet because of different testing methodology and hardware used for testing. We include GPUs that we've tested recently to keep the data as current as possible. And we don't have every single GPU on hand. We don't have a 7700 XT either, so we couldn't chuck that in this video. Let's kick it off with 1080p Windows benchmarks. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at lower resolutions, we are CPU bound. And at 1080p, the 7800 XT is the top of the group with it easily outpacing the comparable RTX 4070 and easily outpacing the previous generation 6800 XT. With Superposition at 1080p Extreme, this one is highly GPU bound and the 7800 XT edges out both the 4070 and 6800 XT in this benchmark. In Cyberpunk 2077, we're seeing the same thing again with the 7800 XT just edging out the 6800 XT and the 4070, but only by a tiny margin. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see the 7800 XT beat the whole group of GPUs by a few frames per second. This is a fairly interesting result since Horizon Zero Dawn is a little bit of a wild card when it comes to testing GPUs, and you're gonna see more of this through the benchmarks. All right, let's move on to 1080p benchmarks in Linux. We use the same applications to benchmark in Linux as we do in Windows, so you can do a little bit of comparison on your own. But remember, the graphics APIs are different between each operating system. A lot of the time, we'll also see the Linux performance being slightly better than with Windows, and that can be either by a small margin or a large margin. The main difference here is the group of GPUs for our Linux testing is different, but that's only because when we tested Linux stuff, that's what we had on hand, but it still gives you a good understanding of the performance overall. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p in Linux, the 7800 XT does not keep up with the 4070 at all. It uh, is beaten by a whole 21 frames per second. It's quite a large margin. With Superposition at 1080p Extreme, we see the inverse with the 7800 XT beating the 4070 by a few frames. In Cyberpunk 2077, we see the same thing again with the 7800 XT just edging out the 4070, but by a very, very small margin. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see the 7800 XT beat a lot of technically faster GPUs by a considerable margin. And here's where it gets a little bit interesting. We've noticed that with this benchmark in Linux that there's quite a bit of variation. And as much as I'd love to call this result a win, it's one of those times that Proton can be a little bit unpredictable. That's because it's running the Windows version in Linux. But on to 1440p Windows benchmarks. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, the 7800 XT is the top of the group. Again, easily outpacing the comparable RTX 4070 and easily outpacing the previous generation 6800 XT. We also saw this with 1080p as mentioned. With Superposition at 1440p, we run a custom benchmark here with motion blur disabled and depth of field disabled. This benchmark becomes a little bit CPU bound, yet the 7800 XT holds its ground and easily outpaces both the RTX 4070 and 6800 XT. In Cyberpunk 2077, we're seeing a similar result with the 7800 XT just edging out the 6800 XT and the 4070, but compared to that in 1080p, the uh, margin is a lot larger. 
In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see the 7800 XT beat most of the group again. The main thing to take into account here is that this margin is quite slim. Onto the 1440p benchmarks in Linux and in Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1440p, the 7800 XT does not keep up with the comparable 4070 at all, being beaten by about 20 frames per second. So the Nvidia card here has a much bigger margin. With superposition at 1440p custom, we see the 7800 XT being beaten by the 4070 by a single frame and that's almost not enough to make a real world difference. In Cyberpunk 2077, we see the 7800 XT really taking charge and beating out the 4070 by quite a large margin. And this is what I'm saying guys, the variation here with Linux benchmarks can be huge based on the graphics API as well. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see the 7800 XT beat a lot of technically faster GPUs again, also by another huge margin. And as mentioned with the 1080p benchmarks, this is just a really bizarre benchmark in Linux with Proton. It almost exclusively favors AMD GPUs every time we've tested it this way. But let's move on to the 4K Windows benchmarks. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K, the 7800 XT is the top of the group again, with it easily outpacing the comparable RTX 4070 and easily outpacing the previous generation 6800 XT again. We saw this with 1440p and with 1080p as well. So it's consistently being faster across the board. With superposition at 4K, we see the same again with the 7800 XT just pushing ahead of the 4070. The 4K performance, if I'm being honest for this card, is a lot stronger than anticipated. Considering the 6800 XT was marketed as a 4K card and this is a 1440p card with marketing, but you know how, how that goes. It's just marketing, guys. It's just words. In Cyberpunk 2077, we see the trend continue with the 7800 XT easily beating out the 4070 by a considerable amount. This one actually surprised me quite a lot. As I said previously with the 7800 XT, the performance here for 4K is a lot better than expected. In Horizon Zero Dawn at 4K, we see the 7800 XT beat most of the group again. I added in the 4070 Ti because I found the comparison here to be a little bit more interesting just because people may ask what the next tier up is like. And yeah, I just wanted to add it here because that Horizon Zero Dawn benchmark is such a wild card. Lastly, onto the 4K benchmarks in Linux. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K, the 7800 XT is a fair bit weaker than the 4070. This one was unexpected, but like I always say, Linux is a different beast. With superposition at 4K, we see the 7800 XT be only two frames behind the 4070. In Cyberpunk 2077, we see the 7800 XT easily outpacing the 4070 by about nine frames per second. And finally, in Horizon Zero Dawn, we see the 7800 XT beat a lot of the fast GPUs again. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why Horizon Zero Dawn performs like this in Linux, but it's interesting to include. I just don't understand why it favors AMD GPUs so much, but you know, it is what it is. And we've been running this test for years now. So, you know, that gives you the answers that you need to know. As far as thermal testing, we ran our one hour stress test in Ida64 and we couldn't get the AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT above 70 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. We also recorded the hotspot temperatures just in case you guys are interested. It got a bit toasty at around 84 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Be aware though, with all of these tests, we run this on an open air test bench and the results will be different in a closed system. And the reason why we test with an open air system is because we can control the environment and it's consistent across the board at all times. As far as power consumption, we observed it hitting a board power draw maxing out at only 252 watts over a period of one hour. The board power draw is rated at 263 watts and we're actually seeing a bit of a trend with this with the last few AMD GPUs where the behavior is that it draws less power than it's spec on paper. That could be a good thing or a bad thing, or it could give us more headroom for overclocking. 
We also observe the 7800 XT to be audible over our stress testing period with zero coil whine. Again, remember this is an open air test system and you're gonna hear everything, but you probably won't hear this in a closed system because although it was audible, it wasn't really that loud. And acoustics are only really tangible and they're only a real metric if the card is sitting next to you. All right, so what are my thoughts on the AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT? Well, when the 6800 XT released, it was a very potent GPU, and it was something that we hadn't seen from AMD in a very, very long time. And I think the same can be said for the 7800 XT, except the 7800 XT is launching for a lot cheaper than the 6800 XT launched for when that launched. It's a whole 150 US dollars less than the 6800 XT's launch price when that launched. And with it having better performance overall, that can be only a good thing. Not only that, if we compare it to the 4070, where it trades blows on almost every single benchmark, the 7800 XT comes in at around 100 US dollars cheaper on average, which is a bit of a win for AMD on the pricing front. That's not to say that 499 US dollars is cheap. All I'm saying that is compared to the rest of AMD and Nvidia's lineup based on purely priced performance, the 7800 XT is better value at launch. That almost sounds insane given things like interest rates and inflation, but the reality right now is that the PC enthusiast market is at an all time low. So seeing something like this that could potentially be within your reach with good performance, it's a nice change, but don't be fooled though. It might seem like AMD's being the good guy here and the AMD fanboys and all the fanboys for all the teams have their ideas on this. But what I think is happening here is the silicon's being produced and if AMD doesn't price it competitively in this time of economic downturn, that it's just gonna sit on shelves for a long time and cost them more money. The real question is, is it cheap enough? This is where all of this can be thrown out of whack and you can chuck this in the bin. If AMD partner cards for the 7800 XT are too expensive, it makes the 4070 much more attractive. And that isn't saying much because the 4070 has been one of the worst received and one of the most disappointing GPUs I've seen in a long time. Board partners need to keep their greed in check and make these cards affordable. If the board partners can keep the price down and they can price Nvidia out of the market in this sector for performance, it can be a win. Not only that, now that AMD's got their own frame generation tech coming that will hopefully compete with DLSS, Nvidia's chokehold on the market may finally come to an end and I'm here for it. On the flip side of that though, AMD is known to make a lot of performance improvements over time with their drivers and their tuning. This has always been a huge thing on Linux, especially with older cards. They kind of age like fine wine. Intel's been doing a good job with this with their R cards too. So the competition right now is looking quite good and competition is good for everybody. Also something that I thought was worth mentioning as well, especially for the reference card design from AMD. It's a small two fan card. And for small form factor enthusiasts, this is looking like an interesting choice because realistically it doesn't get that hot. I mean, in a small form factor chassis, maybe, but from what we're seeing with the thermal testing we've done, it's not terrible. Now I wanna circle back to the pricing because uh, I kinda wanna hit on that point whether or not this is cheap enough. At 499 US dollars, it seems like AMD are trying to lower their pricing tiers, which is something we haven't seen in a long time. We kind of saw this with the 7900 XT, but I felt like that wasn't enough. Right now, it's, it's hard to see whether or not AMD is priced the 7800 XT well. I know for a fact that the Australian pricing is a little bit on the steep side, but again, we just need to wait and see what actually ends up happening with this before jumping to conclusions right now, because if you're interested in the AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT, it's going for around 499 US dollars or around 879 AUD at the time of filming this video. And they should be available when this video goes live. But I just wanted to just reiterate something. 
I was researching some of the pricing for the 4070 and it's only within about 20 Australian dollars in price. So if AMD could just keep that price down, it's gonna be a bit more competitive, but on average, it's still around 80 to $100 more expensive for the 4070. With saying all that though, the 7800 XT could have been better. And I mean, that's the same with any GPU. The thing that makes these things better isn't necessarily always performance, it's the price as well. And it needs to hit both of those metrics for it to be affordable and to be good. I can't wait to see what Intel's got to bring with their new GPUs, hopefully coming sometime soon. But let's hope AMD can improve that performance and tuning over time like they usually do so they can widen that gap even further. And at the end of the day, when we make these videos, all we're doing is presenting you guys with numbers that we found. It's up to you to make a decision. No one can tell you what to choose. No one can tell you what's good value unless they're spending the money that's sitting in your pocket. It's completely up to you. And if this is something that you find interesting and it's worth your hard earned money, you can buy it. If not, don't buy it. It's completely up to you. I cannot make you do anything you don't wanna do. Just giving you numbers. And if you like this video, like and subscribe. If you hated this video, you hated it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And I really hope that over time, the 7800 XT lowers more in price. I mean, launch prices are always more than what we see when cards like end up being over time. But yeah, this one might be really good in six to 12 months time. So keep your eyes and ears peeled and everything. Thanks for watching.